Welcome everyone to Unshoe Sword Reviews. I'm Vic. And I'm John. Hey Vic. Yeah, John. What'd you do today? Well, I did something pretty freaking cool today. Oh yeah? <laughs> yes. What was that? <laughs> Indeed I did. So what we got to do today actually is go pick up a sword. What sword do you ask? The sword in front of us. So mm -hmm. um, this isn't quite an unboxing video, more of a first impressions and just the story about how our day went. So in front of you is a falchion and this is actually a falchion by Angus Trim. So John, how, how, how did this come about? Well, uh, it started, as most good stories do, with an irresponsible financial decision, <laughs> which is great. Because, uh, we sell, you know, as some of you may know, when Angus Trim sells swords, he doesn't advertise them or take orders for them. He basically finishes the sword, and when he's ready to sell it, he puts it up on the internet. Approximately 17 seconds later, someone purchases it, and that's the way this goes. So, the other day, this sword pops up on the internet, and Victor is having some sort of crisis of conscience, I don't know, financial responsibility, blah, 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 I wasn't really listening. But, <laughs> but so I, I essentially, taught, we, we, we collaboratively talked him into purchasing this because it would give us the opportunity, number one, not only to have one of the coolest swords that's probably going to be in either of our collections at this point, but also to meet the person that made this. Because unbeknownst to us, he lives literally an hour from where both of us live. Yeah, so usually, you know, you message him, is the sword's available, you buy it, and then he ships it to you, and, like, as I was talking to him, I hadn't completely decided to pull the trigger yet, but then he threw out the, oh, if you actually live where you say you do, I'm about an hour south of you, you can come pick it up. Also, 10% cash discount, which that really didn't really factor into it. It was just like, wait, what, I gotta come meet you? Like, okay, <laughs> so... Right, so yeah, they say don't meet your heroes, but this is, in a, like, definitely a huge exception to that rule, because... He was one of the coolest people I've ever met. Yeah. So if any of you have ever had the pleasure of meeting Angus Trim, uh, he used to go to like different cutting competitions. I think the re most recent one uh, was the one in Arizona and Sarasota. And that, according to him, was going to be the last one he attends. Uh, from everything I've heard on the internet, he's just a really cool, really chill guy. And now I can completely... Can uh, confirm. Can confirm. Yes. We drove down there and we're really just expecting like a quick couple minute conversation, shake his hand, get the sword. And that's not at all what happened, John. No, uh, we were there for about an hour and we reviewed the sword in question first, the sword that Vic was actually buying. And then he's like, well, when you're done looking at that, you know, you could take that off. And then I was just going to go into the back and get a couple swords to show you. And, and you know, Vic said like kind of like, like the Flintstones when they're leaving work, like Burr! <laughs> that's how quickly we got the thing off of it. because like, show us more swords. we're like what okay well, let's just oh, get this okay, out of the way yeah, clear some space throw that on the ground. Yeah. so so yeah so and then he proceeds to bring out two swords and we look at those two swords for a while and then he proceeds to take them back bring out two more swords right. and this just goes on and on and on so like at every point so like he brings out these the first two swords right which were amazing and uh it was a, a type 18 and a type uh, an 18 b and a type 12 a if i remember correctly mm -hmm. so getting to play around handle these and like we're, we're having we're talking and he's a really down-to-earth guy and we're talking about swords which is just fun to do with anybody who knows about swords but you're mm -hmm. literally getting to talk to angus trim about swords so at that point when like he goes to get them to take him back i'm like okay this was amazing can't believe we got to do this we're, he's gonna kick us out now yeah and he's like oh i'll go grab two more and we just john and i just pause and we're like okay like literally like rca victor dog like her <laughs> <laughs> like, this happened like four or five he just kept getting more, more, swords. more swords and he's bringing out leaf blade swords and he's bringing out two-handed falchions and he's bringing out everything you can possibly think of he brought out what 10 swords 10 swords counted? plus yours plus mine yeah and uh he even brought out the prototype for the uh yes. <laughs> for the valiant armory vision lion i believe is how you yeah, say it the, the, lion, the new type 16 army it. sword that just got announced he had the prototype there and we got to like see it and handle it I also have the Milan, the Type 14 on order, and he had the 14.1 the there that that was yeah. based off of yep. that I got to handle. Plus, a bunch of different sword types I've never got to handle before. It was ridiculous, uh, including that, what, the shortened, what, the uh, 13... So the 13B, yeah. The 13B, the shortened one? Yeah. The, that was amazing. He had, like, a short sword version of a 13B arming sword. It was absolutely amazing. It was really cool. So he had two yeah. versions of that. He brought out uh, one, though, it was the 13B, that had a purple grip and double fillers, and it was absolutely gorgeous that mm -hmm. i immediately fell in love with and mm -hmm. like the the two-handed leaf blade was amazing the 12a was amazing like yeah so as a collector unless you're lucky enough to get to go to an event that he's at you really don't get to see a bunch of these swords in person and or handle them and like they're not inexpensive swords so like sure. it's hard to like amass enough of a collection to get those like i'll probably never be there i have the one behind me on the wall and i absolutely love it but up until then up until today that was both of our 
experience with Angostrim swords. Absolutely, yeah. And to have been in the man's shop and spoken with him and he showed us blades that he's working on mm-hmm. and, and talking about the process that he's going through with it and how he descales the blades and, and just... It was, it was amazing. It was like a peek behind the curtain. Yes. It was really, really excellent. And I swear at every point I thought it was going to be over. And then he just and then he just seemed happy just to like talk about swords with us. Yeah. Gen- genuinely a nice person. And then like, I mean, just a little character moment. Talking about he's got a bunch of, of semi-feral cats that live out behind the <laughs> shop. And he's talking about how he gives them water and he takes care of them. And he makes sure that the swords aren't anywhere where they can hurt themselves on them because they come in the shop to cool off in the summer. So just a really, really cool guy. Genuinely top to bottom. Really good experience. Yeah. I cannot get over how good this experience was how it completely blew the doors off anything i was hoping for because like you have no expectations actually that's not true what i was expecting is to see the guy talk to him for about a minute shake his hand and get my sword and i would have been happy totally fine with that right but what we got was just like genuinely like great interaction and just a fun conversation getting to see a bunch of amazing swords and getting to handle like he let us just swing them around and play with them like do what we wanted with them like exactly and we were kind of joking around, like, not smart to bring two people you don't know into your shop and hand them murder weapons, but <laughs> you know, it's interesting. So, but, and then the other thing is, what about the sword that you're going to get next, so, Victor? Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about my poor financial, financial responsibility. I'm really good at this game of helping him be financially responsible. Yeah. So the, uh, the 13B that had the purple handle, I think it was the 13B.3 or dot four. And, uh, John holds it and is immediately like, you're going to like this. And it hands it to me immediately. I fall in love with it. And I was fawning over it so much, like, you know, he would take two away and then bring more back. And he brought that one back just to compare it to the other Type 13B. And I just started drooling over it again. And I was like, is this one done? Is it all, like, set in and everything? He's like, oh, yeah, that, one, that one's about done. You know, I might go to retirement here pretty soon. And I was like, right on. And then just kind of as a throwaway line, I let him know. I was just like, yeah, so I'm just going to be eagerly watching uh, the internets to see when you post that one's up for grabs. And he was just like oh yeah just let me know when you want it and sure and i was just like wait wait what and i wasn't even like really tracking what he was saying in the moment he i feel like i you probably thought you know i had a speech impediment because i was like blah 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 blah. and he's just like yeah when you want it just let me know and i was like you'd hold it for me he's like yeah just let me know and like he didn't like press me for a timetable i was just like i'll do it next month and he was just (laughs) he was like all right just like let me know and so Apparently, I've committed to buying the 13B Arming Sword, which I am not sad about because that sword's gorgeous and was so fun to handle. And then you fell in love with a little baby falchion, didn't you? I did, yeah. So if you look at the way this falchion is sort of uh, proportioned, it's fairly thick all the way through. And then it's got the big, the, the fat belly at the end there, much like the uh, Chinese Dao we just re- re- uh, reviewed, which you should check out that review when it pops up. Um, but so the, he had another one on offer that he showed us and it was significantly more gracile in its construction. So I, I think that the belly at the end may have even been bigger than this. Yeah. Or at least proportionally. At least proportionately. Proportionally definitely. it certainly was. But I mean, I want to say that the, that the, the main structure of the blade itself was maybe two inches, you know, two and a quarter inches maybe. So it was very, very thin and very, very, it was just light and fast like, like you would expect for being that thin. So I think I'm probably going to buy that in the spirit of, you know, keeping Victor company and his financial irresponsibility. I can't be the only one. Exactly. No, it's not fair. It's too much, <laughs> it's too much burden for any one man to bear. <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. And just, it, it was just fun to talk swords with somebody like that who has, who's just so knowledgeable, you know, like the yeah. com- whole conversation started because we were talking about the, the Neo Way Dao that we just reviewed yep. and how we were talking in the car about how, like, if you like swap that blade with a falchion blade and put that on a crease or a messer oil, blade or a messer blade. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, it, it's almost the same thing. Yeah. And then boom, that is spurred an hour-long conversation which is so fun delving from anywhere from like cavalry sabers used by the mongols to the the evolution of sabers in europe way before anybody thinks they were there i mean the man is just a font of knowledge and but you know sometimes when you talk to somebody that's that well versed and that intelligent they can be preachy or kind of actually about things and he was the, the absolute opposite of yeah that. Just not that at all a really really interesting fun man to talk to really good, a gentleman the experience alone of getting to go look around his shop see a bunch of cool stuff and him show us swords and just get to chat with him for an hour like that alone was like worth the like money you know yeah, what i mean i would have sure. paid to do that um but i also got like a really cool sword like we were so excited leaving that like we i was like a secondary thought that like one of the coolest swords <laughs> in my collection is in my trunk you know what i mean like, absolutely just because the whole experience was so great is that that was just like an ancillary benefit right. at that point so uh real quick let's do like a quick uh, first impressions about this sword again we'll do a full review in due time we have a lot of stuff that we'll probably get to before this but just some initial impressions the way we would in an unboxing um i think this sword is absolutely striking to look at the profile of the blade it's amazing. I love the color blue on the grip. I love the blueing of the, the hilt components. The, the overall aesthetic of the sword is amazing. I really like the way the sword handles and feels. Like you would imagine a, a falchion is going to be a, a little bit choppy, like a, a little bit of blade presence. This definitely has that, but it's also like pretty agile. He said, uh, Angus Trim, 
that uh, this basically handles like a good saber wood as opposed to like a falchion. Yeah. But so like I'm very impressed. I'm very happy. Also, we did some cutting just for our fun, and the ring that it makes is oh so satisfying. So it, yeah, yeah, I couldn't be happier. Obviously, like I'm gonna wait for like the come down of the high of the experience <laughs> to then be objective about the sword. But first impressions are I couldn't be happier. What do you think, John? Yeah, I would echo everything you said. Um, I was a bit surprised by how much blade presence it has. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but that's not a negative thing. That's Again, I think that's what a falchion should be. You know, this is for severing the limbs of peasants that are annoying you. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's well suited to that. Um, but it, it's light, it's fast, it's gorgeous. The look of it is, I think Victor used the word striking, and I think that's absolutely appropriate. Yeah, I, I couldn't. If it was my sword, I'd be so happy. It's <laughs> yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And as we were talking, uh, if you had in a handle that's smaller fashion, like maybe that possibly I skewed it, some yeah, agility, because like that thing was, that didn't even feel like a sword. It was also funny because like every time uh, Mr. Trim walked away to like go grab more swords, John and I just had this moment of like, oh my God, is this actually happening? We may have done things like, <laughs> yeah. So we were, we made him laugh at the end because I was like, yeah. you know, we're trying to be chill about this, but like, I'm like a kid in a candy store. We are fangirling out right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, he just laughs. He's like. I kind of thought it might be something like that. <laughs> but then it was funny, like we made ourselves laugh because like he goes and gets more swords as like we're both holding, you know, very expensive swords. And I was like, how funny would it be if like he just comes back and we're not there? <laughs> he just sees like smoke shaped clouds off us. But yeah, that was an amazing experience. Uh, I can't thank Mr. Tram enough. I don't think he'll ever watch this video, but if you do, thank you very much for letting us come check your shop out and being so gracious with your time. That was an amazing experience. It's just as an enthusiast, I can't believe that I got to do that. So, a hundred percent agree. It was absolutely an amazing experience, and just a real gentleman, just a really, really cool guy. So, yeah, if if you were on the fence about buying a sword from him, and you were wondering, like, is the money going to a good place? It is. <laughs> Especially now that like we've got like a pretty decent sample of just getting to see different types of swords that he makes and getting to handle different swords. Like we were mm-hmm. talking about it, like so we handled uh, different army swords, 13B, 16, and 14. Every single one of those felt amazing for completely, completely different, different reasons. reasons. Yeah, and they all wanted to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They were absolutely amazing swords. So, so like yeah. I would have advocated to buy some of his swords before, but now getting a decent sample size, yeah. now, I, oh my God, now I'm, I'm going to buy more clearly. So And just yeah. knowing that the guy is an awesome, genuine, cool human being, which yeah. is like the, the best part of the experience for me, to be 1, honest. So, thousand percent agreed. Yeah. So, so yeah. All right. That was uh, just all we wanted to do was a quick initial impressions, let you know about that experience. It was a lot of fun. We have like lots of reviews coming out pretty soon. So yeah. Anything else, John? That's all I got. All right, guys. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Peace. Peace.